take a uh, a charge from the private and flick it back into the public. Now, this is different to the courts that have to, because they are creating the facade, have to operate in the public. But UCC does not have to. Um, uh, it can flip between the two. And we had started to use the UCC in an original uh, form for the uh, EDP process. We were using the UCC to take their dishonor and monetize a debt. But because they can play games and will play games and have played games, we made the choice that the UCC was uh, less effective than completing the um, notarizing and witnessing of the uh, EDP process because at the end of the day they can say no and they will say no and if you can tell me people who can who have who have won consistently with UCC I will change my opinion but when you hear about it at the end of the day, and I've known some, some people who have been absolute experts in UCC and are some of the many, or the few I should say, because not many of them, some of the few that are constantly referred to in the urban legends of UCC wins, and all of them will tell you that all they did was they got a stall or they got a uh, removal of an official and none of them ever saw the results of their uh, liens, liabilities, debts, none of it. So I think it's, I think it's a dangerous process, UCC, because it really ultimately wastes time and it gets you away from the core. We've explained tonight um, the core powers they're using against us and uh, UCC only plays into that. Okay, thank you. Thanks again. Thank you for your question. Thank you. All right, Frank, um, back to the chat questions real quick. The couple of questions that might go together here. Um, one serve notice uh, on the police courts with the legal notice EDP, and is it okay to do the EDP process for, for simple seatbelt tickets or traffic tickets? Um, I, I think the ecclesiastical deed, and given the fact that it's dealing with your life, it's dealing with people who are trying to uh, claim that they uh, control your spirit. It, it deals with the history of a system that has done this to our ancestors. Uh, you're dealing with something um, that is extremely important and extremely solemn. Now, if you think that a traffic ticket is where you draw a line in the sand and this is where you're going to respond, okay, that is your choice. But so long as the process is followed with the absolute respect, that is your choice and your journey. Remember, the ecclesiastical deed has strength based on your competence and your honour and your knowledge of a relationship, an intimate relationship with the divine where I have no role nor anyone else has a role to interpose ourselves. Now, if that is your approach to it, I don't see it a problem at all. But if you approach it as a trivial way to get rid of a parking ticket, then clearly you're taking something of immense importance and showing a lack of respect. And ultimately, if that's what people do, then they will find the consequences of such ignorance. But I don't think that's what you're saying, so I hope I answered my qu the question uh, honestly to, uh, to that. And it applies to both of them, yeah, whether it be uh, police or courts or seatbelt or parking fines. You know... It, these things can be serious. I know a fellow who had a bunch of parking fines. They put him in prison for six months. Six months. So it's serious stuff. It's not, you know, going to court on a seatbelt 
fine and parking tickets. They put people that, and Terry, you know this, they put a, a fellow in prison the other day uh, on a bunch of, of charges of driving. I mean, these things, and they weren't doing anything wrong. So it's, uh, it, it can be very serious. So, yeah, I have no problems. No problems. People use it respectfully. Well, respectfully, yes, but I, I, it's always been said, and, and Frank, I think you'll say this too, is that you pick and choose your battles. Um, to, you know, it, just, it depends on your competence level um, and your confidence to be able to, um, knowing who you are, to be able to use it on those types of issues. And for a simple parking ticket that might just be a few bucks or maybe a traffic ticket that's under $100, uh, it's one of those things. Just pick and choose your battles wisely and um, not get yourself in, in more situations that are just not worth uh, the hassle. Good. Um, all right, the next question we have, I believe we got someone on the phone line. Truth matters to me. Are you there? Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. This is Greg, uh, Ron's Hi, friend Greg. up in Idaho. Hi. Right. I have, uh, boy, you've, you've covered so many wonderful points tonight, and I've been resonating with everything you've said as I've done deep study. Um, are you, you're, um, first of all, I'd like to cover something about the time issue. That's uh, December 21st, uh, 2011, and then the zero year between that date and uh, December 21st, 2012. Frank, would you, would you expound upon, because um, a lot of us, Really, we heard you say this before, but for some reason it didn't didn't connect the dots with me until recently. What that year, uh, that jubilee year, is, and um, how does that how does how that's going to go into place regardless of what the system wants or anything, right? This is sure. this is the universe resetting the clock regardless of what any of us want, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a it's. Um there was a fellow a long time ago, a prophet called uh, Daniel, and uh, he set in motion a prophecy which saw a rebalancing, and it was you know variously called the prophecy of seventy weeks, but out of it came a number, and the number was significant. It was a it was a number uh, that we had to wait that had to be met somehow, some significance before there would be a great cosmic rebalance and the number was 1260. Now it was written as 1260 days but but there's you know pretty unanimous agreement that it really meant years. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the number came again into the, the work of John of Patmos and his writing of the book of Revelation. Yeah? Yeah. Where he, he, he then validated that this number was one of the most significant prophecies to come true that there would be a period of uh, tribulation, if you like, of 1260 days or 1260 years, is what he meant, and then we would see a rebalancing. So then you, you, you pick a start date. So clearly, if this is significant, you pick a start date. And there's been many, many. <laughs> I, mean, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, you know, how many times has the Day of Judgment been picked? I mean, firstly, by the way, uh, when people say, oh, a day of judgment, and they pick it out of, out of order, the day of judgment is the third day of a divine foreclosure. So you know how they do foreclosures on us? Yes, 90 days. Well, God is doing a foreclosure on them. Good. This is the third part of it. Yeah? The first I, part I, of it... I, hmm? No, go ahead. Continue, please. Well, the first part of it was December the 21st, 2009, and that was the day of divine agreement and understanding. If you go to the front page of oneheaven.org, you'll see that a a series of notices were actually issued around the world about this to the ruling elite, saying, hey, uh, everything's forgiven. Uh, If you do the right thing and stop what you're doing and start actually behaving as proper... Uh, trustees and administrators, here's the offer. And uh, that was sent out on December the 21st, 2009. Of course, only one group responded, and the one group responded, responded in a, in a, a sort of circuitous way. Uh-huh. And, then, um, and then 
on December the 21st, 2010 was the second day. So the agreement was offered. People didn't respond. So in a notorial process, when you send out a notice and it's not on it, what do you do? What do you follow up with? Uh, the notice of dishonor. Right. Okay. So then we have seven deeds of divine protest and dishonor that were issued. And that's at the bottom there. So they've gone out on a range of issues. And then once uh, a dishonor notice has not been uh, uh, honored and uh, assigns again, then what can you move to? You can move to a default what? Well, you mean judgment, a default judgment on them? Or? Yeah, a judgment. That's right. You can move to a judgment, can't you? So that's where we're at now with this coming December 21st, 2011 with yep. Michael, the Archangel, then that's right. coming to judgment. And then that would be the setup of the release of all the captives in um, in what they've created as the hell, then, in essence. That's too, right. Correct? Because if that's right. This brings me to my next question, and I want you to finish that one first, but I, I just wanted to, this, this ties in with the concept of hell, because for, as I've traveled around the world and I've talked to people and I've talked to people from all different places, I've, I've noticed that the stress that's on everybody, as you were talking about tonight, how, how everybody's made to go to work and, and to struggle and barely have enough to survive, and these people have gotten so greedy now, they don't even want people to survive at all anymore. It's the, yep. the, the, really the absurd extension of this whole thing on their arrogance. And I've known that um, I, for some reason throughout my entire life, I didn't want to play the game at all. It just even when I went into it and got insurance and securities license years ago and quit seminary and all the different things I've done, I knew that the game was rigged and that there was no way to win. And this concept that you spoke about, the Col Nidre, which, is, uh, which many of us have known about for a long time, is, is, is literally an oath that's sworn by these judges through their Masonic rituals once they get to 32nd and 33rd and then above. Yep. That, yeah, that Masonic level. goes the same thing. Yep. Right. So every group, even fraternities, people that join fraternities and sororities, they don't realize that while they're having their drunken parties, they're swearing these oaths. Also, and um, well, my my point is is that the world has to be freed from all of this. And if it did not, I mean, if, if this release does not come, and if we don't carry this out as as you're you've been led and, and to to lead or to help us to wake up and to actually become competent and help all of us lead our way out of this and free humanity, this, this pressure cooker would go off um, regardless. Um, no, well, let me, let, me, let me ask you a question. Uh, is Archangel Michael flesh or spirit? Well, I guess based on today of magisterium, that's an interesting question based on the 70 or 50,000 year ice age. Uh, well, sure. spirit to the extent that now, he... What's that? Spirit, spirit yeah? Right. Now right. spirit, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And can the temporal world stop something that is spiritual? No. Okay. So the day of judgment's coming whether I like it or not. Yes. I mean, I'm irrelevant. The the die has been set. This is what this is what the ruling elite don't understand. Once the seals were broken, the spiritual machine has started and it can't be stopped. The the coming the coming of one heaven is a likeness. Okay? The original is spiritual. I mean, you can burn, you can destroy the website, you can burn every copy. It doesn't change the fact that it has already been written and it exists and that this timetable is being set and is going to happen whether they like it or not and that, and that the war is over and that they can come and... Look, they're tearing down this home in Cogra where I'm living in in two, three months' time uh, because they're going to build a new home. Now, they can distract me, distress me, they can do whatever they like. It doesn't change the fact that the day of judgment can't be stopped, nor can the day of redemption, nor can the end of their world. It's it's over. That's what I mean by it. I don't mean it because I say it. Right. I mean it because the, the, the wheels have started and can't be stopped. It's spiritual. Yeah. So those of us that see it, then we really all we become is a messenger of, a, of an event that's already locked in stone. That's right. I'm a witness. <laughs> right. Right. So then we're also I'm just a witness. The, you are. You are that witness, and so we're also witnessing the freeing of all those souls that have been yep. bound up into these ridiculous beliefs of hell and 
and, and predatory yep. and all the concepts there, they're all being released regardless of what they believed at this point. That means all, all the people that were tricked through all the 